Okay, Tansy. Hello, my name is James Robert Short. I'm the Special Events Coordinator for Sikokotoki Friendship Society, as well as a member of the Métis Local. What you're about to see is a reenactment of the sacred use of tobacco in the Blackfoot tradition. The Cree and other tribes' ceremonies may differ slightly from what you're about to witness. Only those who have sacred privilege are allowed to participate in the tobacco cutting ceremonies. Roland Cotton, an elder with the ADAC Provincial Guiding Circle and a member of the Blackfoot Nation, has the right to perform these ceremonies because of his affiliation. This video is being made to teach the sacred use of tobacco. It is believed that much healing can take place by returning to our sacred ceremonies. Because this is only a reenactment for educational purposes, the songs that you will hear are not the songs performed during an actual ceremony. In making this video, we have taken great care to respect sacred traditions. Please make note that this video is not intended to be a step-by-step -step guide that one can use to perform these ceremonies. If you are interested in participating in a tobacco cutting ceremony, please contact an elder in your area. I was raised by my grandparents. My grandmother's name is Makka, and my step-grandfather's name is Colin First. They were practitioners in the traditional and spiritual ways of our ancestors, both of whom knew the principles of medicine and by every right were doctors. Tobacco was an important herb in their ceremonies, and they would pray in all occasions, more importantly at least three times a day, once in the morning, at noon, and just before sunset. They were against me going to residential school, therefore I never attended a residential school. I lived with them in my early years, and it was from this that I became accustomed to the various aspects of holistic and herbal healing performed by my grandparents, especially my grandmother. She traveled quite extensively with her doctoring people, and uh, I traveled with her. There were ceremonies for the various aspects of religion and healing and life itself. They range from naming ceremonies, pipe ceremonies, transfer of medicine bundles, and chieftain ceremonies. More importantly, there was the tobacco cutting ceremony, as this was an important aspect of all of the ceremonies. When the Europeans came, tobacco was unknown to them, and the use for it was not understood. Thus the casual use of tobacco began. What followed was the widespread abuse of tobacco. As for the natives, the locally grown tobacco, the sole purpose was for ceremonies and rituals. Tobacco grown by Indians was not meant to be inhaled and was always mixed with cuccasin. It served the same purpose as today's sweet grass. After the native was put in the reserves, the government did not want the Indians to grow their own tobacco as commercial tobacco was now being grown. Since commercial tobacco was a source of revenue for the white men, many natives had to resort to growing tobacco in secret and the art was lost to those who had the right to grow it. This was because it had to be grown in locations no longer accessible to local native population. They could not leave the reserves without a permit and also they were forbidden to grow their own tobacco. To compensate for the loss, the government began a program of allowing natives to gain access to tobacco by issuing special permits to the population. 
However, the commercially grown tobacco was treated with other substances which caused it to become addictive and potent. This was done to prevent those who used tobacco for ceremonies from growing their own. Widespread use of tobacco among natives did not start until commercial tobacco was introduced to them as part of their rations. With the introduction of the government-run residential school system, it ruined our way of life physically, mentally, and even threatened our spiritual values. The tobacco cotton ceremony is one which has been greatly affected by the forced assimilation of an alien belief into our beliefs and values. At best, little is known of the greater significance this ceremony holds. Thus, many of our people have forgotten how the ceremony is done. The residential school system took children away from their homes and a way of life to a foreign culture which did not address their culture as being important. A child would not be in contact with their roots from the age of 5 to 16, and it was this area of separation which caused many to lose their cultural identity. While at these schools, the children were taught that their way of life was inferior and their spiritual values were a form of satanic and even demonic form of religion. Those that persevered were the ones who carried on the culture that some parts of our spirituality remains. What the residential schools also did was to force the children to learn to hate each other and those who carried on our culture. Many of our spiritual leaders were forced to abandon their callings and therefore had to perform ceremonies in secret, thus causing a loss of knowledge of how these ceremonies were done. Not only was our way of life affected, our language suffered. As a result, the meanings of some words was lost to many. I was very fortunate because my grandparents took the time to teach me the language and therefore I was able to understand them in the areas of these ceremonies. At the residential schools, the use of our language was not an option as many of the priests, nuns and teachers would punish those who spoke our language. When contact with Europeans was made, our culture and traditions were on a level which was in harmony with nature and the Creator. Our ancestors were able to heal the sick and were given blessings which enabled them to communicate with the Maker directly. In return, they praised and worshipped in ceremonies and rituals outlined by the Creator. They thanked the Maker for all the blessings that they received, and one of the major ceremonies was the tobacco cutting ceremony. Let us examine the tobacco cutting ceremony and the importance of this ceremony. Tobacco leaves, after being harvested, are dried on a rack made of willows and smoke cured using Saskatoon berry tree leaves until it is brown in color. Then it is carefully stored where no other substance will come in contact with it. Usually it is wrapped together and hung on a pole till it is dry. Then the next phase of curing begins and it is soaked in a container of water overnight and then three or four leaves are twisted together and dried. This is called twist tobacco. Kaksin then is collected and dipped into the container where the tobacco leaves were soaked and then it is smoke cured with the twist tobacco.
After curing, they are placed together and are ready till needed for a ceremony. The finished supply has a rich, sweet aroma, and this is achieved because of the Gakusin and Saskatoon leaves. Most of the elders choose the mountain juniper or Gakusin. It's because, you know, it's more of a sweet smell to it. The aroma is better than the ones that are out in the prairie. So they prefer going to the mountains to pick it. And the best time to pick it is in midsummer. And it's that time of the year where the smell is stronger. And when you mix it with the tobacco and it's smoke dried, and the aroma is extra sweet. It's not like a sweet grass or sage. Usually the one who grew the tobacco is the keeper of supplies until he gives it to those who need it. And only this person and his descendants are the ones who have the right to grow and harvest the tobacco. The purpose of the tobacco cutting ceremony is to make a peace offering to the Creator when needs and blessings arise. When a ceremony is needed for a reason, the host announces to the people that he is having a tobacco cutting ceremony. All elders are invited, along with medicine men and women, and also those who need prayers for commitments or promises. Then a pipe holder is found, as only certain individuals have the right to own and carry a pipe for this ceremony. Close relatives and friends are encouraged to sit with the host as he is the main focus of the ceremony. These people sit with the host and also a person is found who will do all the physical work of the ceremony and this person is usually a close friend or a fellow member of the host's affiliation. At this point, before entering with the medicine pipe, the person who is carrying out the physical work will be the one that's going to be stopping at the four direction. In every direction from the south, west, north, and east will plant a bit of tobacco to the ground to give thanks for this ceremony that's about to happen.